I'd like to welcome you to the Billionaire Mindset. I, Lenster Campbell, take you through the mindset of a billionaire. If you have this desire to become one or even to get better at your steps in becoming a billionaire, be sure to tune in. Of course, we are in the Len Capital Hour. Correct. Yeah? Yes. Now, Andy would have asked you something off air. Yes, he did. Right? You remember what that was? Yes. He yeah. said people like to learn about how to save money yeah. or saving money. Yeah. That's correct, right? Yeah. Yeah. And my response to him was, if you want to learn how to save money, this is the wrong program to listen to. This is the wrong. So correct. if you know, you want to save your money. Don't listen. Don't listen. No. Switch off. <laughs> Switch off for the next half an hour. Because what I'm going to teach you how mm-hmm. to do is how to earn money, how to make money, yeah. how to allow money to work for you, and how to make your money grow. I yeah. don't believe in saving money. My name is Lenster Campbell, and you're live with me on the street 91.9 FM. I'm from Len Capital Certificates, and we're going to talk a little bit today about... That would we love to hear and use called saving. Saving money. Now, mm-hmm. people like to save, as he rightly pointed out, because they feel when they open their internet banking and they check their account balance, they see a lot of zeros, a lot of numbers there. Yeah. And they tell they would tend to tell themselves, "Well, look, I'm in a good position right. because I have money saved." Right. Right. Um, they would have done a number of things to acquire the money, and then they take the money and they rest it down. Now, I would have spoke about this last week, and anyone who knows me, it's not something I'm saying now. I've been saying it since I was a teenager. I personally don't like saving, and professionally, I don't believe in saving. Because anyone who understands what the creation of money is for or was about would understand that saving your money is basically wasting it Mm -hmm. that's basically what you're doing when you decide well look i work hard i I made some investments into myself i got an education i got a job or otherwise and then now i have this money my i have this money and i decide i'm going to put it in an account or a credit union or wherever you decide to and then save it just leave it there um for we like to see here in a rainy day i would always say that's a bad thing because in some parts of the world it rains every day So, in order to cater for every day, what you have to do is not actually save your money, it's invest your money. Invest your money. And investment comes in many different forms of fashion. Mm -hmm. It's not only taking your money and putting it into a mutual fund or something that gives you compound interest. Investments could be into your business, it could be into yourself, it could be into your children, or it could be into someone or some people, as it were, who have businesses or business mindset, and understands they either want to start a business or grow their business. That's the correct thing to do with money. When you put money into an account, let's say, what you would say, let me ask you, Robert, what do you think is a good figure that you have saved? If you had a goal right now, if you say, look, someone said to you, you have a savings account? You say, yeah. Something billion. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're saying that because you listen to my program, right? Yeah. But I, before I, I, my program, billionaire. <laughs> no, 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 Glenn, right. Glenn, watch me. Glenn. L- Glenn. Let me, let me tell you something. I was talking to him just Sunday, right? And I tell him that I will never die poor. Okay. And he said to me, he just want to be comfortable. What does that mean? I don't know. Well, I I don't know what that means. <laughs> Comfort for everyone. Comfort for everyone meaning, <laughs> meaning, you know, you can do things without having to worry about, oh God, if I spend this amount of money, I can't do this, so I can't pay for my car loan. Right. You well, right. So therefore, you have to keep listening to the billionaire mindset. Right. And don't save your money. Don't save. No. The, the goal with money is what we call earned income. That's the first part. So right. you come to work, you work hard, you make your money. Right, that's called the earned income. What persons often do good afternoon. What persons often do after they've made earned income is that they would take that earned income and let's say 
as you said, you want to live comfortable. Yeah. But your earned income goes towards paying bills. It pays for your rent or your car note, your yeah. insurance, your everyday lifestyle. If you have savings, you may come on my you may come on the program today. I saw you had on a nice watch. And I go home, I research, do some research. A nice watch could be about fifty thousand. Right. What if I only have fifty thousand dollars saved? Oh Lord, in problems. I'm in problems. <laughs> so you're telling me that one watch yes. is worth fifty thousand mm-hmm. and their watch is more expensive. So then someone will tell you, Well look, you save any money not to buy a watch. Mm. But if for me my goal has always been to own a nice watch. Yeah. Therefore that fifty thousand dollars seems like watch money to me. You understand? Yeah. Now when you take that fifty thousand and you buy that watch, that's it. Yeah. You now have to start over with your savings. Let's say what you actually did was you took that fifty thousand and you invested it. You invested it into a company like us that pays you yearly interest returns. Mm-hmm. Now our interest return on fifty thousand right now is five percent. Okay. So that will pay you twenty five hundred dollars a year. Which to most people doesn't seem like a lot, but if you take fifty thousand and you just rest it on top of your fridge and the mattress, don't get anything added on. you don't get anything. You rest it in the bank, yes. you get less than your fifty thousand. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, you don't learn anything. You don't understand the market. You don't understand right, the right. flow of money. So apart from not gaining interest or gaining very little, right. you don't learn anything. Wow. And part of investing is also learning. Right. So you took that fifty thousand and you invested it over a ten-year period. Twenty five hundred dollars by ten turns into twenty five thousand. Now, if you would have earned fifty thousand dollars and saved it, the odds are you can probably earn another fifty thousand and save that as well. So, if you did that consecutively every year, fifty thousand you saved every year and you put it aside, each fifty thousand gains its own twenty five hundred dollars, which turns into twenty five thousand dollars per year. Twenty five thousand by ten takes you to two hundred and fifty thousand. I can now buy my watch. And I have enough. Money. You have. You still have a capital. We can say you still have your. Fa- you still you have, have the. 50. Your fifty by yeah. ten, which is half a million dollars. Yeah, right. Then you have two hundred thousand dollars still save, and I would. I always believe when you get a lump sum of money, what you should do, you need to. I call it getting it out of your system. Mm-hmm. Make bad purchases, wild purchases. Take ten percent of anything you earn, and spend it. So, like a watch, for example. That's what you do when you make passive income because that doesn't hurt you. The money that you worked hard for is still there. The interest is what you made, which is your passive income, is what you spend to buy the watch. So when you look at your hand and you see 50,000, you're like, nah, maybe I shouldn't. Well, yeah, I'm not buying watches. I don't buy assets. No, I'm not not buying watches. I buy assets. I don't buy anything that doesn't increase in value or doesn't earn me money. No, I do have watches. Yeah. I do. When I go to certain meetings or certain functions, there is that watch that I put on that says, yeah, my time is, <laughs> is worth money. Yeah. But just to say I'm buying it to put it on, to flaunt, as mm. we would say here, it's not something that I do. It's, okay. not, it's not something that I practice. But even though I decided to, I would make that purchase out of that passive income, that additional money that I would have saved. Yeah. Now, let's say someone listening might say, look, it took me... 10 years to save 50000 right. So I can't do the math you just quoted, but I want a $50,000 watch. I would say then you need to make more earned income. Right. Because what yeah. we try to do, mm-hmm. they will make 50000 and you try to take that 50000 and turn it into 500000 Which, if I can be brave enough to say so, it's no different than taking $5 and hoping to win $2 million. <laughs> it just It's just not... Yeah. I don't know how many people you know. I know a lot of people. And everybody I know will tell you, you cannot take $5 and turn it into $2 million. I don't care who you are. I don't care what math you know, right. what algorithm you can write, what software, what program. You cannot take $5 and turn it into $2 million. Right. So therefore, you cannot take 50000 and turn it into 500000 mm-hmm. You need to make more earned income. The more earned income you make, the more passive income you're able to make. So if you only make 50000 you should not be looking at a $50,000 purchase it, 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 and what an interesting topic because a lot of people when they reach a certain quota mm-hmm. they start to get comfortable yes right. i reach they start to get lazy that's a trap um um but can i learn something learn. Um, right well, so we're going to say about the youth mm-hmm. who just they might 
just be making enough money just to live. Mm-hmm. But they want to shine up themselves and yes yeah, and so basically yeah. basically those who don't have yeah but they hang in the I can yeah, say yeah. hang in the heart when they carry yeah. Too. Well, if you are a youth and you're not making enough money and you're looking to well in my day they'll call it bling right yeah I would ask you why. There's a quote that goes that goes if the purpose of something is unknown abuse is inevitable. Mm. So what is the purpose of me? blinging, shining, what is that, what value does that add to what I am about to achieve or where I'm hoping to go? I would love to use Robert for example. Let's say when Robert started off here, or even you as a DJ, you didn't start off with a laptop and you were, hey, DJ Andy, Mm -hmm. the first minute you touched the Serato. If you're like, well, I'm not sure if you're like me, but I didn't know what Serato was. Right. At the first program I downloaded to try doing DJ, DJ, virtual DJ, yeah, yeah. right? And I went somewhere and I was so proud and they was like, what are you doing? Yeah, what's that? that? <laughs> what's that? How do you mean? You want to roll with the buzz. You want to roll with the, exactly. <laughs> and now somebody had to say, look, if you want Serato, you have to pay for it. Yes, yes. Sir. There's no crack version. Well, I don't know now, but at that yeah, time. But that crack version, no. <laughs> right, but at that time, at that time you, there was no crack version. Correct. You had to pay to be a DJ. You had to buy a Serato system. You had to put in the hours. And I didn't know that. That I thought was, hey, you pull two songs and you mix it together. And they're like, no, there are beats, there's timing, yeah. there's cues, there's loops, there's yeah, different things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you have to practice a lot of hours. Of course. Sometimes just to mix five or six songs. They've been practicing hours Come to on, perfect that craft. Am I wrong? Mm-hmm. So it's the same thing. So just imagine you're a DJ, I'm a DJ. Mm-hmm. Right? And these are DJ, I'm a DJ. Mm-hmm. But my goal is to look good. Yeah. So when I, I'm a DJ with a nice shine, as he said. Yeah. And that's all my focus is. I go to work, I have a normal 9 to 5. Because that's how most DJs start off. They have a 9 to 5 and they do the DJing as a side hustle. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But my focus, when I get my earned income, I do shine. Mm-hmm. Jerseys, jewelry, whatever the case may be. Right. Sneakers. Sneakers. What Andy does is he buys a Serato system. Right. First, he maybe his laptop was 256 gigs. He upgrades to 4 terabyte, 8 terabyte, 10. I'm not sure what it, what is the requirements yeah, yeah. now. He upgrades his computer system. He upgrades the speed, the RAM mm-hmm. of his laptop. He practices more hours than me. He buys better cords because I didn't even realize that they have certain cords that if you, you plug it into the system, it gives you a feedback yes, if you have yes. inferior cords, right? Mm-hmm. So he's investing over time yes. into yes. the right yes. while I'm only on shine. Yes. What's going to happen now when we do a clash? Mm-hmm. He's, well, he, he has more gears than you. And his gears is something, you know, more top, more, more top of the line. More to, and not only that, he has more practice. Yeah. And the quote is, practice makes improvement. Right. So even though, from the time I look the part, when I touch the laptop, you can tell I'm fiddling, I'm not sure where the cue is, I don't know the shortcut right, keys, right, right. I'm making all the mistakes, but because Andy has been perfecting his craft over time while I was shining, because he may just have on a normal T-shirt, DJ Andy on it, and a jeans. Yeah, most of the time, that's him there. That's it, with right? The with, the, with the slippers. Yeah. Well, in this instance, you put them in sneakers, right? <laughs> you put them in sneakers for this example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's in his sneakers, and Robert invites both of us, unknowing to me, because mm-hmm. he heard about me. Some people talk, hey, Star is a good DJ. Yeah, yeah. DJ Andy, hey, want to do a song clash? Mm-hmm. I wasn't prepared for that. But how do opportunities come? You have to prepare for it. And they don't call you and say, look, the opportunity is going to be next week. The opportunity calls and then you answer. So I show up and he shows up, but he's prepared. He knows his cues. He has crates. They still call it crates? Mm -hmm. He has crates Mm -hmm. with his music already set with the proper cues. Mm -hmm. He's done so much of work in the background that he has big names like Mr. George, Mr. Montano, who give him, what do you call it again? The plates. The plates. The plates. Right? I don't have any of that. I have shine. You have shine. You have a little gold chain that... Right? You know. And I probably have a little falling because people like yeah, shine, yeah, right? Yeah. But when it comes to the clash, and it tears me apart. Mm-hmm. Win the grand prize. You win the grand prize. And then his so name... Familiar. <laughs> <laughs> the, the it's so familiar. It's so familiar. With the same people. With the same people. <laughs> <laughs> right? 
So it's no different than the business world. Yeah. The man who takes his time or the youth or whoever takes that takes their time to focus on shine, mm-hmm. when it comes down to it, you're going to lose. And yeah. I tell people that all the time. I will beat you every day. You get in a room with me, I'll beat you. Right. Because the time you take in to shine, bro, I'll yeah. beat you. I'll be doing my research. I will go before a meeting and I'll do a research. Before I came on the radio, I did my research. Yes, yes. I researched who Aisha Wells was. I researched who Mr. George was. I did research on you. Mm-hmm. Well, Andy is new to me, yeah. but that's me. I would yeah. do my research. I came in today. He and I had a brief conversation and I already yeah. learned certain things about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So I wouldn't make those mistakes the next time. Mm-hmm. So you find in the future, let's say it comes up that you have another person vying to take my spot Thursday evening at 5 o'clock and the decision comes on to Andy. He's going to say, nah, yeah. well then capital A. That man knows what he's saying. Because yeah, he's been with me. I've been on the ground. I've been doing the work. And it's no different. In every situation, we tend to think a business person is only the man who wears shirts and tie and drives in a nice vehicle. Yeah, yeah. But the business person, and he's a business person. Truly. The way he markets himself, his brand, mm-hmm. his DJing, that's important to him. Yeah. I his know drops. his drops, right? Mm-hmm. All of these things are important mm-hmm. to him. And he perfects his craft. Oh, yeah. I had a friend, he was a DJ. And he would spend, I mean, literally afternoons whole afternoon till the next morning while we're playing cards he's mixing tunes for us okay. how you'll find this song yeah. pulling oldies with mm-hmm. new schools i don't know if they still call it these things because yeah, that yeah. was our master, way back mastering his craft yes. and then eventually now he became really good at it that it became second nature yeah. from the time he opened his laptop it's yeah. like they would say he became one with it if i was to just touch it like no no no, everything is set he knows where everything is <laughs> yeah. he's able to Folders is in a place in, in a yeah. particular place yeah you can't yeah. touch that because yeah. he says look this i use this to make money yeah. so he he invested even more he went and he got better mics he got um speakers and all these different things better turntables in order to become a better dj yeah. Yeah. and it's the same thing with business so when I say you start with 50000 mm-hmm. what I would say to anyone who has that saved, don't just leave it there as mm-hmm. savings and forget about it. Invest it and forget about it. Right. Go ahead now to try to make 500000 Don't just up your game by, okay, I made fifty. I'm trying to make another fifty. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing like when we used to do, when I would get music. Right. They would tell you if you get, um, it was rhythms at the time, mm-hmm. you would try to get as much rhythms as possible you wouldn't get one rhythm today and one rhythm tomorrow you'll never get all you'll try to get as much as possible from whoever is in the field or whoever was in the field probably 20 30 thousand songs (laughs) exactly but imagine andy trying to get one song a day he'll never finish he'll never learn his craft he'll never understand the different types of music and now because of social media and technology we understand there are a lot of different genres that we are exposed to all the afro pop beats and all these different things whereas before it was more limited to soca dancehall reggae probably techno now there's a lot of different information out there Mm -hmm. and things are changing i'm seeing women djs that are famous trinidad tobago all in the uk women djs Mm -hmm. or female djs are taking over and I am sure they didn't just show up with a laptop and say, well, I could DJ. Yeah. They may have gone in a, a clash. They still have clashes, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, you're going in a clash, and I guess that's how you sort of prove yourself. Yeah. And even though you lose in a clash, I'm sure that Andy would have learned more from losing a clash yeah. and winning. Yeah. Because you can see all the mistakes that you make. Exactly. And you go back now, and you don't say, oh, God, well, I lose, and you mash up your laptop. Yeah. No. Yeah. You go back and you, you learn. You learn, you yeah. queue over, you set it properly. You Maybe mistakes and you correct it next time. You yeah. correct it next time. So when you go to the next clash, even though you let's say you don't win that one, you're making notes and you learn again. Exactly. In the business world and investments is the Very same well. thing. Mm-hmm. You learn you lose, you learn, you make your notes. Make your notes. It doesn't matter. Always make your notes because you have something to go back to. I know with DJs what do you call when a mix? Mm-hmm. When they make mixes from when they now start where they are now mm-hmm. and sometimes they go back and they laugh and like look how I mix that yeah. and how I thought to pull that tune yeah. that tune yeah. don't even line up but they were learning yeah. and in the business yeah. world is the same thing with investments is the same thing so just imagine Andy wants to be a DJ how long are you DJ now Andy? Well, a very long time well let's say 10 years yeah. just imagine Andy wanted to be a DJ and today is the first time he decided to become a DJ mm. You walked into the studio and said, hey, I want to, always want to be a DJ, you know? Yeah. And Robert said, all right, no problem, I'll give you a chance. Mm-hmm. Play something for me. 
And it's like, with what? You have no he have no clue. He doesn't. No laptop, he's ten years. Yeah. He's ten years today, but the knowledge he should have gained ten years ago, he doesn't have it. Gotcha. So he's unprepared. Mm-hmm. And you're gonna be like, well, you're not serious. You had to be some sort of madman or something. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. First of all, how did you pass? Security. Security. Yeah. Security. <laughs> Get him out of here. <laughs> and it's the same thing we do in the business world. Yeah. But because Andy would have had, let's say, 10 years under his belt, he has experience. Right. And you would have hoped that he would have spent his 10 years wisely. And if he didn't, the moment he enters into a clash, he's going to say, boy, you know that Sunday when them fellas was doing X, Y, Z? I should have been on my laptop. Yeah. And I've heard DJ say it. Mm-hmm. I should have been. Mm-hmm. Or somebody come and ask you for a song and you don't know the song. And as you said, it's across the board. Mm-hmm. It's across the board with everything because I'm a, produ- I'm a producer. Right. And with producing, you need to always know what is the new tones. You see? What is the, what is the new song? Yeah? That's out. Because sometimes you hear a song on radio and you be like, all right, I can do that. But the tones they used in that song, that song right. is different. It's different. Especially when you get now at, from the producing angle mm-hmm. because there are a lot of different vectors and, yeah, and yeah. song graphs different from what we hear in coming through the radio through so, that. Yeah. Exactly. And then you have to know what is could be radio friendly. It makes what, sense. What could be radio ready. Right. You know, uh, uh, should I use this kick? How this kick would song on a particular system? And it's just about knowing your craft and... As you said, in the business world, is similar. It's almost identical, you know. Mm. If we were to take that same philosophy yes. or the same emphasis, let's say to the youth who wants to shine, yeah. I would say just take the shine and put it into business. Put it into investing. Put let's, it into your future. I said, let, let's take a two-caller. Sure, no problem. Let's take a two-call. Guys, call us 342 081 WhatsApp seven seven one one seven nine one and four six six five three nine one. Call us and touch base with us. You know, maybe you want some advice, information. You probably want to do a business. Correct. This is the guy here, Mister Len Capital, and I must say, he's always top of top of <laughs> The guy always dandy, you know. Of course. Yes. You ever you ever saw a lion that was not a lion? Uh, and the lyrics too bad. The lyrics too bad. Somebody is saying here, um, Patricia, good afternoon, Len. Have you considered a plan of investment for low income earners? Honestly, not at this time. Because we thought about doing it, but it gives the low-income earners, I would say, an excuse to not earn more income. I have seen in instances where persons would put, as we were talking about Shine, Mm -hmm. a lot of um, energy, emphasis, and effort into getting Shine. Why not the same energy, effort, and emphasis into growing your capital to invest? Right. Take your time and and don't, don't be hasty. I take your time and because in the investment world, okay, you're a producer. Yeah. Is there a shortcut to producing? Could I take a crash course tonight and tomorrow become a producer? No. Could I do it with DJing? Why do we want to do it in the business world? Right, we you. want to not that we don't want to assist the low income earners, but what we can show you is how to become a middle income earner, how to become a big income earner. Mm-hmm. Certain things, there are certain sacrifices you would have to make, and there's no overnight success to business. So to come on the radio anywhere in business and say, look, yeah, we have a a low-income plan where you can invest $5 and win $2 million, I would be selling dreams. And that's one thing at Lend Capital Certificates we don't do. We don't sell sell dreams. Everything takes time. And when you look at, if I can feel free to talk about um, DJ Khaled, because I know you're into producing. Yeah. When I heard his story, how far he, he's come from, the amount of things he's had to do, mm-hmm. he didn't become DJ Khaled overnight. Yeah. You didn't become Roberto yesterday. Mm-hmm. He wasn't DJ Andy this morning. He's been at it a number of years, and I'm sure in each respective field, you're going to keep putting in the craft. Yeah. So for me to come now, imagine you're a producer, and you hear me giving advice. Well, look, you could become a producer overnight. Just pay me twelve ninety nine, and I can... I guarantee you in the morning you're going to be as good as Roberto. Not already, you know. Play the disclaimer, please. Play the disclaimer. Hello, good evening. Pleasant, pleasant evening to you, Mr. Len. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Thank you 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 for
Mr. Tabo, keep in the building. Good afternoon, sir. I have a question for Len Carpenter. Go right ahead. Len Carpenter, I have two acres of land. I have one acre of land that I have been planting. I'm about to sell that land. When I sell that land, tell me, should I invest in other expensive real estate or take it and put it in the bank? I'll let you off there. Thanks so much, Mr. Tabakit, for calling. Mr. Tabakit, thank you for calling in, but I do apologize. You forgot the third option. Right. Call 324-LENN <laughs> and invest every penny you would have earned from yeah. selling that property. Mm. And we're going to tell you exactly what to do, how much you can earn yearly interest from whatever you may make from the sale of that two acres. Do not take your money and put it in the bank. Right. It's as good as just leaving it home. Right. And with anything with your car, with producing, with doing DJ work, with business. Mm -hmm. If you just put it to sit down, it doesn't make money. What I would also share is that people think putting money into the banks is safe. It is. It is safe to a point. Mm -hmm. What the banks does, they have permission to triple or quadruple the money that you put into the bank. Mm -hmm. So let's say that was Mr. Tabakit. Yeah. Let's say Mr. Tabakit sold his two-acre property for $10 million. What the bank can now do is loan out to us as the public forty million, mm. and collect interest on that forty million that Mr. Tabakit would now have left at the bank, just sitting there, thinking that it's doing nothing. But the bank is actually using it to work for the bank, and Mr. Tabakit gets nothing. Mm. However, if he calls Land Capital Certificates in the morning, asks to speak to Miss Andrews or asks to speak to myself, Lenster Campbell, we would advise him on how to use that money to continue growing. Going into real estate is a good option, mm -hmm. but again, you would need to call the number and we'd be able to give him further advice on, to, on what to get into. Just as with anything, let's use DJing for example. When I first started out with Virtual DJ, I thought that is all that was required. Right. Download Virtual DJ, learn how to mix a couple songs. It wasn't a load, eh? I know that. That's why I could say brave on the air. <laughs> because Virtual DJ at that time had millions of downloads. Right? But then that wasn't it. If I had spoken to an experienced DJ in the field, they would have said to me, what you're doing may be a good start. If you just want to have fun at home. If you want to be a serious DJ. If you want to make money. If you want to make this your craft, you have to honor it. Therefore, you have to spend time. You have to spend money on it every single day. Any DJ that doesn't play or train every day is going to lose. Same thing in the business world, same thing in the producing world. It's something that you have to do every day. Every day. Every Mr. Tabakit may not want to do that every day. That's why he has done capital certificates. Yeah. We don't do days off. Okay. Even today I had a meeting scheduled for Monday and then my assistant called me. She said, Monday's a holiday. I said, mm. oh, I didn't know that. Because it's a normal day for us. We work every day. Yeah. So I had to call the customer back and say, well, it's a holiday. If you want to come in, we'll be available to you. But if you want to enjoy your holiday, you're free to do yeah. so, and we'll see you on Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what Lend Capital Certificates provide. We provide that knowledge that when Andy, 10 years ago, and I see he looking at me like, yeah, boy, this man knew my history. When he started doing DJing 10 years ago, somebody said to him, you'll need to honor your craft. You'll yeah. need to make an investment into yourself, into your your laptop and your cords and your time and getting your crates and paying for your dub plates and because we i thought those were free right i don't yeah i mean i wouldn't know unless you're yeah, in the world but yeah. if somebody schooled you and let yeah. you know look but it will be worth it in the end mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's no different with business with investment it's the same thing you have to honor the craft and it's not going to be an overnight success it will take some time and over a period of time you will receive those returns Great information, great information. Mr. Campbell, closing comments, closing whatever. You, the floor is yours. <laughs> well, as always, my name is Lenster Campbell. Mm -hmm. We have uh, another call? Lost it? Lost it, lost it. Yes, as always, my name is Lenster Campbell from Len Capital Certificates. And our goal is not to teach you how to save money. Our goal is to show you how you can earn money and make money work for you. Cool? Yes, yeah. Sure. Hello? Yes, Mr. Tabaki, I have a pertinent question for Len Campbell. Come on up. Sure. Thank you. So, Mr. Campbell, 
public servant get the back pay and you have that money. Not you with advice them because that will be hot money in their hands. Mm. What sort of advice do you will give to public servants, public sector to do with that money when they get it from the government? Mm. I would advise them to come together because we talk about unions all the time. Right. Come together, pool all that money that they make, yeah. they receive in back pay, come into land capital. Let us tell you what to do with it. Mm -hmm. There's a saying that goes unity in numbers. Unity, or strength in numbers, right? Yeah. Strength in unity. It will be no different. If you have 100 back pay workers getting, let's say, $10,000, yeah. that takes you up to $1 million, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's more profitable to get returns on $1 million as opposed to one person coming in at $10,000. And that would be my suggestion. Back pay is money that you already live in your life without it. We tend to think here, oh, well, when I get my back pay, I'll go buy that $50,000 watch. Bad idea, bad investment. Pool it together. The more of you that come together, you can get better interest rates. The interest rates on $1 million is 20%. The interest rates on $50,000 is 5%. So if you if you all are able to pull together a minimum of one million dollars, that's twenty percent divided ten ways, right. as opposed to five percent on fifty thousand dollars for one person, and that would be my advice. Yeah, that's right here on the street ninety one point nine FM. Well, yeah, check out Mister Len. Yes. Right. With all your back pay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I need to. Sure. Sorry, yeah, Andy. Yeah. But I want one one more question. No yeah. problem. So right. so between your comp well, the company that you work for and a credit union, mm -hmm. what, what's the difference? Well, the difference is when you put your money in the credit union, there are different pros and cons to the to the having your money there. Um, I will cannot say what all the pros are, or what all the cons are. Mm -hmm. The difference would be the interest returns we would give you would be higher at Land Capital. And also the versatility of the business or businesses that we do own and operate. It's a lot different from the average credit union. The credit union operates under more bureaucracy, as it were. What Lend Capital does, even though you decide not to invest directly with us, we will show you how and where to invest your money. And even if you should invest your money. So you will go to the credit union, and I don't know if you've had or have that opportunity, but most credit unions cannot tell you or teach you how to make money. Mm -hmm. So you just take your money, put it in the credit union, and then maybe you take out some shares, then you borrow three times your shares, you buy a car, you pay it back, you build credit history. At Land Capital, we actually teach you how to make money. When you invest with us, you have, in most instances, depending on your investment, you have access to me, which I would also show you how to invest other monies that you may have or how to even help bring those monies back in with higher interest rates than you were hoping to get, or even steer you clear of certain investments. Mm -hmm. So when we had a big scandal, I don't want to call the name on here, a couple of years ago, I advised all my customers at that time not to do it. Because when we did the maths, it just was not making dollars and cents that right. someone or some entity could overturn that amount of money in that short space of time. And those who listen to me, call me singing praises because we understand what it takes to earn money, make money, and also keep your money. I hope I answered your question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Len Capital, Mr. Campbell, the conversation always is fruitful. I, I'm always amazed with, with, with the amount of information he has now. And let me tell you guys something, huh? I'll be real here. Sometimes Mr. Len Lenstar will come here and he'll, he'll, he'll be asking me, what are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Tell him, yeah, you know, yeah. what are we talking about today? And then something in his studio will pop up and then he say, ah, that's it. That's it. We go over that. Yeah. You know, so I must say it's good energy, good vibes. I appreciate it. Every time you are in the studio and all the best. Thank you, you very next much. Tuesday. Yes, you will. Oh, yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I know Andy real ask that question. Yeah, yeah. He, he got his pay money's worth. Yeah. <laughs> he should pay for that. He should be, yes, yes. He got his money's worth. Right. <laughs>